Hi guys, Luke from MGN here. I thought I would throw together a quick impromptu tutorial guide. We're gonna do it live as I play through. Just on the first level of Dark Deity, get you familiar with the gameplay mechanics and some of the nuances as a part of the game. That way when you start playing, well, you've got the platform to gain experience yourself with a little bit of base knowledge. The first point I'm gonna go through is weapon types. There are four weapon types in the game. The first is the red one, which has a higher damage than the others, but as a trade-off for that, it has a lower accuracy and a lower critical hit chance. The second has a higher critical ch hit chance, but a lower damage and a lower accuracy. The third is the green one, which has a higher accuracy, and you guessed it, trades off the other two in damage and critical hit. The last is the yellow, which is a bit of jack of all trades. It's good at everything, but not great at anything. These can later be augmented and leveled up with what the game calls weapon tokens. Weapon tokens you get from defeating specific enemies, you get them from finishing levels, you get them from chests, and they will increase the stats of those weapon types, they will shore up some of their bad points and make what they're good at even better. The second point in regards to weapons is there is no weapon triangle in this game like you would expect from Fire Emblem. You can see that here, all of the enemies, except these guys in the back here, have a little down arrow. That means that my weapon is ineffective against their armor, and as a result, they'll have the advantage in combat. That doesn't necessarily make or break combat, it just, like, it helps, or it disagrees with you. So, at a glance, if you're looking at whether you have the advantage or not, this is a really easy way to tell, and it's really obvious. Big green arrow, means good. Big down red arrow, not so good. The second point I'd like to make is that just because Marin and the other clerics are healers, they don't really act well, they can heal, but they won't be the typical healer archetype that you're expecting from games. They can hit hard, and they actually start with a lot of health. Marin starts with 28 health, and she's surprisingly tanky throughout the game, so it comes in handy a lot, and them being able to dish out damage, and it's not minuscule damage either, it's quite relevant damage, gives them something to do while everyone's at full health. So, don't get stuck in that rut of, this is my healer, I've got to have her all the ways back here in the corner away from harm, because that's just not the case, you don't have to do that. They're usually frail in games, I, I, I don't disagree with you, but that's not the case here, you can use her as a frontliner if you need to. The next point I'm going to make is enemy ranges. So enemies will have scripted pathways that they take in reaction to your events, but the easiest way to manipulate these is to have one of your units fall inside these ranges. This is also an easy way to make your units who actually genuinely are frail, like Seer is at the start of the game, avoid damage. You just place them outside of those enemy ranges and place who you want to get hurt or who you want to be susceptible to attacks you can actually take them inside the enemy ranges. For example, yeah, we'd want Irving. He has a lot of health at the start of the game, but maybe not Alden, because he only has 22 HP. So we check, we keep Alden outside the range, we keep Irving inside it, it's all very good. You can toggle all enemy ranges off or on if you'd like, so you constantly know where you're susceptible to damage, you know, if you're trying to play it safe. The last point I'm going to go over is the combo wombo, which is basically the, it's the tactic that's gonna get you through the first three levels of the game. Your instinct might be to get your frontliners, like I mentioned, Marin can be one of them if you want, and Irving up the front to be tanking, taking on the bad guys, on face value. And rarely is that the best idea. What you want to do is engage on the opposite of what benefits the ally. See, Delian here, he's melee. So, if I go in with Irving and I initiate melee combat, I'm going to attack him and I'm rarely going to one-hit KO an enemy at this stage of the game. So he's going to get a reply attack. So what do I want to do? I want to initiate with range first, and it might not kill him, but what it's going to do is getting into a range where my melee can without him ever having the chance to reply. So by initiating with the range first and then going in with the melee, like I said, you're going to be able to defeat enemies pretty consistently like this throughout a good portion of the game, at least until you've own, developed your own strategies and sort of more advanced tactics as you unlock more classes and more ways to play the game. But if you're unfamiliar with the genre or you're not really, if you haven't played something like this in a while, 
just don't forget about this. It's going to help you a lot through the early levels of the game while you're trying to learn how to play Dark Deity. I'm going to cut it off there. I don't want to overload you with information, uh, but check out our YouTube channel. We're going to be constantly providing updates on Dark Deity. We're going to do guides, how-to videos. We've just posted one on the how the recruitment process works with the example of Sloan and Sophia, so check that one out. And yeah, keep an eye out on the YouTube for more Dark Deity tutorials.